Good morning, Manufactured Home Show, brought to you by ManufacturedHomeMart.com. Thank you very much. My name is Mike. I'm your host. It is Thursday, April the 7th, 2011. The headline news today is there's another um, earthquake in Japan, which those poor people, there's a 7.4 and it's located like really close to where the other one was. And they're anticipating maybe a six foot tsunami wave. So once again, Japan is just being pummeled. And so I want to once again pray for those poor people. I don't know what they did to uh, make God upset with them. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I don't really believe that th that, that happens. Although, uh, as evidenced in the Bible, we do see that God does like to take out his wrath on folks. But um, I'm not a big subscriber to that. I, I like the more God is a loving and nice type of God. Uh, I like to subscribe to that. Cheers. And good morning, everybody. Whoop. I hear the soundtrack, but I don't hear it as loud as uh, normal. If you do hear some music, that's my wife jamming as she gets ready. I also erased my jam session videos from yesterday because they were very silly. If you got a chance to see one of those, um, I'm sorry, I was just in a crazy mood. But I erased them, I think, before anybody took any kind of notice. <laughs> All right, let's see what else is. There's a couple other big things in the news today that I... I wanted to talk about before we get get going too much. Uh, MSNBC is talking about Trump, Mr. Trump, Donald Trump, and he's for some reason he feels like he has to keep uh, going with this thing about Obama and his birth certificate. I thought that this was already settled like three years ago. Apparently, what's going on? Reading this article from. Uh, uh, MSNBC, <laughs> Donald Trump is still, it looks like he, he wants to ramp up for a nomination uh, uh, for the president in 2012, the Republican nomination. Now, whether or not that happens uh, remains to be seen, but I will say this, it's just another good thing for the Democratic Party. Last time the Republicans they they screwed up big time when they when they decided let let's have Sarah Palin on the ticket. Boy did that ever backfire. Quite honestly, if you didn't have Sarah Palin and you had just like some normal looking dude like Joe Biden, you just get anybody. Uh, McCain probably would have won the election, and then all the Republicans and Tea Party whiners could stop their nonsense and. Um, then it would be the liberals' turn to sit there and and uh, critique the performance of McCain and say how terrible his presidency is. Now, for my part, like I say, I do tend to lean I, I tend to lean to the liberal side a little bit to the left. However, uh, and I am a registered Democrat to vote, but uh, I'm not a party line guy. We talked about that yesterday. I, I don't just blindly follow the Democratic Party. So I would like to urge everybody out there in the United States that's old enough to vote, please don't be a sheep to your party. It's okay to be Republican or Democrat if that's what you choose. But um, have some thoughts of your own. Don't just swallow whatever they're serving up to you. And that, go, that goes for, for anything, really, not just politics. Um, uh, people do need to question authority. People do need to question government, the way things are running. The United States was uh, was founded uh, for the people, by the people. We all know that. Read the Constitution, and you'll know. Now, um, let's see. I want to I want to quickly move along because anyway, I was really amused by the Donald Trump thing, and I guess Bill Cosby is telling him to run or shut up. And who cares what Bill Cosby has to say either? <laughs> I mean, it's a crazy article. It's right on the front page, msnbc.com. Go and, and read about Trump. He has real doubts that Obama was born in the United States, even though a bunch of uh, professionals already uh, stated that his birth certificate is authentic and he was born in Hawaii. So I don't think it's going to work. 
What Donald Trump really should do, I'm looking at his picture, of all the money that, that he has, he cannot fix his hair. He's a smart guy, don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I, I think that, that Donald Trump is, obviously he's a successful, very successful developer. And so he, he must have some intelligence. Um, now, I thought it was, one more thing about Trump, I thought this was funny. He was talking about, um, he's talking about paying uh, seven or eight dollars a gallon for oil. Look, I'm a regular American. I'm a middle class. As a matter of fact, I am like the perfect example. If you were to take a segment of middle class America, that's me. I'm, I'm very middle class. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I, I simply will not pay uh, $7 or $8 a gallon for gas. I'll take my vehicles and I'll take them back to the dealership and I'll say, here you go. Give me an electric car. Okay. I'll drive a Chevy Volt. I don't care. I'll even drive the stupid Nissan Leaf with its limited range. I don't care. The point is, is that when it gets to that level, that's when the vehicles, which, which are overpriced, we talked about this before, the vehicles are overpriced right now, electric vehicles, stuff that runs on things other than gas. Uh, it, it, it just doesn't work out uh, money-wise to buy a vehicle like that, which is unfortunate because I think more people would buy them if they could realize um, a, a money savings by not paying for gas. Right now, even at three fifty, four bucks a gallon, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't add up. It doesn't tip the scale the other way so that after four or five years of paying for gas, you eventually eclipse the price that you would pay for an electric car. That's not happening. But if you pay seven or eight dollars a gallon for gas, people are simply not going to stand for it. So the idea that oh we're going to have five, six, seven, eight dollar gas, you know that may be well and true, but as soon as that happens or starts to happen, uh, the American people are going to bail, uh, and, and and as well they should. I definitely will. I've already had it up to here with gas, and um, you know I'm just looking for the technology, but. But big oil is very powerful. These companies, they're into the government. Believe me. <sighs> well, don't get me started about that. If you'd like to call in and debate on the live show. Whoa, sorry about that. Somebody called 911. Uh, feel free. The number's on the screen. If you're not watching the live show, you're watching the recorded show, do not call in. It's not going to do you any good. Unless you want to just talk to me, <laughs> which I'm glad to, by the way, because, um, it, you know, not to talk politics, <laughs> call me up with something manufactured home related. And I do have to apologize. I Yesterday I said that we were going to focus more on manufactured homes. Um, today I did not have any brilliant ideas for things that I wanted to talk about manufactured home wise. Um, I, I was not at the Tunica show. I will say that if anybody wants some news about manufactured housing, um, the best place to get that right now is mhmsm.com. Little plug for Tony's business there. Uh, excellent news source for manufactured housing. So if you want to catch up on that, I didn't look at any of the news. I wanted to talk a little bit about maybe the Tunica show, but uh, I'm not enlightened enough uh, to talk about it at the moment. I do want to encourage everybody out there that's in the in the industry to get involved in the state associations uh, or any other trade associations that uh, might be in your area and get on board and start supporting manufactured housing. I floated out the idea, um, a, fr a friend of mine sort of got me going on this thought of having a national retail association or even local retailer associations. I want to encourage all the retailers out there to form an association for yourselves, whether it's on a national level or a local level. I think retailers need a bigger voice in the industry. So I want to encourage all you guys out there on that side of the business to do that. Um, because the manufacturers dominate all the trade associations uh, today, including the national MHI, 
And, um, you know, the manufacturers build the homes. Aside from that, you know, really the, the bulk of the work that goes into the marketing and, and building up the industry, if you will, is done by retailers and land lease communities. Land lease communities, there's a lot of them out there that do have associations on the local level. Um, I'm trying to think if they have a, a national. I don't think that there's really a true organized association for land lease communities. That's not a bad idea, but um, I think I think even in Arizona, I know we have a, a communities association, and I'm sure several other states do. It's the retailers that I think a lot about because they're the ones that always get get caught. And uh, coming from that side of the business, I know what I'm talking about. Um, a lot of responsibility falls to the shoulders of retailers. And in this system, it's, it, it's pretty messed up. And if, if you really want to know, you can talk to, talk to my dad about that and ask uh, him about some of the issues that arise as a retailer. So associations are good. I want to encourage people to get involved. The only way to change things is to get involved. I realize that there is, uh, it is, it is difficult to, to penetrate into the associations, but I think that's all the more reasons to start, uh, to start new associations, whether they're retailer ones or, or different. Uh, the more voices, the better. And um, we need that. We need that in our industry. We need to push, we need to push ourselves forward into the 21st century. I, I really do see that a lot of the archaic ways of the business are causing the demise of, of many, many, many um, businesses in our industry. Now, with that, let me say, manufacturedhomemart.com internet presence. Very important to every single business in our industry. And the beauty of manufacturedhomemart.com, if I might toot my own horn for a moment, because I am the owner. There's no secret, by the way. And the Suns did win last night. I'm looking at my beautiful shirt. But I digress again. Listen. <clears throat> oh, that coffee's good. <laughs> anyway, listen. Um, I, I'm, I'm going on and on, and I think it's about time to just go ahead and stop. But um, everybody get involved, and things will get better. We certainly, we certainly have got to make a move here and uh, get ourselves going on the right track, uh, bring ourselves into the 21st century. A lot of the old is not going to work. Uh, you can advertise any type of business on manufacturedhomemark.com. Sorry, that's where I was going. Um, whether you're a retailer, manufacturer, community, financial institution, supplier, transporter, wherever you fit, whatever your niche is in the industry of manufactured housing, you can advertise your business and increase your revenue, excuse me, by using manufacturedhomemark.com. Now, we are a relatively new website, and I know it's hard for people to grab on to new things. People don't like to change. They don't like to trust. But I've invested a lot of time and money, and I will continue to do so to make ManufacturedHomemark.com the number one place on the Internet for manufactured housing. You have my word. I'm going to continue and push and push and push until I cannot do so anymore. Now, that could mean that I'm either dead or the business folded. But let me tell you something. I'm not one to quit. And I do relish the role of being the little guy or the, the small fish swimming with the big fish in the sea. But manufacturedhomemark.com is unlike any other website for manufactured housing. We do things differently. We're able to generate traffic now that is starting to be respectable. And uh, I encourage everybody out there in the business and also those of you that are private buyers and sellers to use the site. Uh, take a look. And if you have any suggestions or anything at all, 
that you might want to say to me because I'm all ears. I want to improve the site and the goal is to make it the number one marketplace for manufactured housing in the United States of America. It is my vow to do so. So watch out. <laughs> you know who you are. You need to look out for. That's right. You need to look out for little old me. I, re I represent David in this David and Goliath war. And, and it is a war because business, uh, business is brutal. And in our business, people don't like the new guy. So, um, you know, we're going we're gonna to push our way in there. And uh, our numbers will speak for themselves. As they start to improve, I think I'll more proudly uh, discuss where we're at. Right now, there is a lot of room for improvement. However, if you really look at it, um, if you advertise on the site, your, your business is, is going to excel. And that's a promise for me to you. And I will be glad to back it up. So anyway, wow, 16 minutes. That's like the longest show I did in a long time. Listen, everybody, I'm going to get out of here because I'm sure you're bored by now. But thanks a lot for tuning in to the Manufactured Home Show. Thank you so much for your support. Please check out the site. And, and please get involved in your industry. And uh, let's start to change things around and move towards the future. The future is now. There's a real downtime in housing. Down, 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 down. It does make it difficult for us to thrive because really we do better when we are affordable. We become more affordable when housing, you know, the prices are a little higher. However, even in this depressed market, we still can be the affordable housing that everybody is looking for. So, um, from those of you out there that think that uh, uh, that uh, we have trailers for sale, we do not. Those of you that think that our products are inferior to homes built on site, they're not. In many cases, our products are superior. Believe that. This is 2011. Do you really think that the manufacturers building homes right now in their factories are not state of the art? Come on. Yes, they are. And, the, and all of the materials are inside. They're not sitting out there exposed to the elements. And weather does not play a big role, except for when we do get to the site. So homes can be built quickly. They're built efficiently with not a lot of waste. I'm really rah, rah for manufactured housing. I love it. Hey, it's my business, so it's my job to support it. And uh, thank you so much, everybody. Get out there and go to all the manufactured housing shows that you can. Take a look at those homes and see for yourself. Talk to the people there. They'll tell you how energy efficient they can be, how great they can be. You see for yourself, okay? Now then, uh, we'll also give one plug for the MHI Congress, uh, which is the National uh, Convention for Manufactured Housing in Vegas. Go to Congress and Expo.com for the MHI conference in Las Vegas. Okay, now I'm out of here. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for the Big Friday show. Wrap up the week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.